Hi, my name is Dr. Adams and I'm the dentist at Maryland Holistic Dentist in Burtonsville, Maryland. And we get a lot of questions about kids expanders and growth appliances. Now I think it might be worth talking about the different types of growth appliances we have and kids certainly come in all different sizes and shapes. Some have upper jaws that are too small and lower jaws that are too big and some have jaws that are just too small in general, but the upper and lower jaws are really a very comparable small, and you're just looking to promote um, the growth. And there's really a few different types of appliances that we have. This is a really common appliance called like an ALF appliance. Um, it's really just, ALF appliance is called an advanced light wire functional and it actually clips onto the teeth. It doesn't fit this guy by any stretch, but basically, you know, it'll clip onto the teeth like this and like this, and it gets permanently placed. Um, and then when, and it stays in the mouth all the time. That's another thing. And then when the child comes in every, I'd say four to eight weeks, we'll make little adjustments and make this wire a little bit wider. And then you put it in and it has a little springiness to it and it springs out, especially once the tongue hits it and that's what's promoting the growth. Um, a lot of times I'll have parents come in and they'll say, well, what is the best expander? And there really is not a best expander. What you really need to do is just find an appliance that is capable of promoting the growth that your child needs. And it's also really important that the child actually be able to comply with the appliance. These alpha appliances actually stay in the mouth all the time. So if you're eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches or stuff getting stuck all over this, and sometimes they can even become dislodged, they can be a little bit more difficult to comply with. Also, if the appliance keeps coming out, you may find yourself driving back in here every week for us to put this appliance back in, and you can have some real issues. Um, this is a Schwartz appliance, and the Schwartz appliances actually are only worn at nighttime. And the Schwartz appliance has a few different features that the ALF appliance does not have. This is a springy wire that gets placed. There's actually one for the bottom and one for the top and the person still bites on their own teeth. There's nothing that causes them to bite down into anything different. So you're not gonna be in any way changing the relationship between the upper and lower jaws when you bite down. So if your kid has a situation where their lower jaw is too small and kind of further back, and you wanna get the, like if the lower jaw is biting back here and you want the lower jaw to, to grow out, um, you're going to need an appliance that's actually capable of stimulating forward growth of the lower jaw. And that's actually done with what we refer to as a bite plane. Um, a bite plane is something where when the appliance is placed in the mouth and the patient bites down, um, depending on how this is shaped, you know, it may be balance so that the person bites you know more back or more forwards it just depends on how you shape this so the strategy to get forward growth of the bite plane is to shape the bite plane so that when the person bites down they bite in a slightly more forward position and the research has shown that if people bite in a slightly more forward position you actually get remodeling back here where the lower jaw you know actually meets the cranium and you will get a forward uh, growth of that joint. Um, that's how the lower jaw moves. So basically what I'm telling you is, is that if you have a child that needs to get their lower jaw out, um, this work, this alpha appliance would not be an appropriate appliance because it's not capable of getting the lower jaw to, to grow forward, um, at least not by any great amount. Um, the, uh, the, the Schwartz appliance, typically the, the one that I do, let me see here. Oh yeah, this one's already expanded a little bit. 
Um, you can see how there's like a section that's kind of um, down the middle, and then there's a piece here. And what you do is we give these instructions to our patients just once a week. You'll come in here and you will turn this like, like this in the direction of this arrow. And then there's another arrow, let me find it, yeah, right here. And the appliance is turned this way. And that actually causes the appliance to grow a quarter of a millimeter forward and widthwise. And what that'll do is it'll put a light stretch on the paddle bounce, and specifically that suture here, and also the points where the teeth meet the bone. And the research has shown that if you have a light stretch on the connection between the bones, anywhere where there's basically ligaments that connect bones to bones and teeth to bones, and that's held for a week or so with kids who are growing, um, that, that the jaw will grow by a quarter of a millimeter about every week or so. Um, so I guess what you can really begin to see here is that when we have our kids come in, um, what I recommend is that you have your child come in and we'll take a look at their mouth and we need to figure out, you know, what the size of their mouth is, what the shape of their jaw structure is, you know, in what direction they need to grow, um, so that all their teeth and their tongue fits in their mouth properly. And then that will dictate what appliance we use. Um, and there's not really one quote best appliance. You know, the, the best appliance is the one that, you know, we can actually adjust and, and design so that it promotes the growth your kid need and that your child's able to actually comply with the treatment. One of the first telltale signs that kids may need an expander is as the teeth are coming in, they're crowded and crooked. That is a true indicator that the jaw structure is not growing to be big enough for the teeth to fit. And of course, there are a lot of other important things that happen in the mouth and the general lower jaw area. Like for example, you need to breathe at nighttime. If your teeth aren't fitting well, you're not smiling properly. And, uh, if your upper jaw specifically doesn't grow to be wide enough, the sinus spaces may not be big enough. Um, all these things are, uh, are, are really important. One of the other problems we see with kids that aren't growing and developing properly is they're not getting good sleep at nighttime. Some kids may even have a small enough mouth and upper airway that you hear loud air sounds or they may even be bad enough that they're snoring. Really, the strategy with growth and development with kids is you want to get their jaws and facial structures to grow to be big enough so all the things that belong in the mouth, such as the tongue and other things, stay in the mouth and they don't fall back into the airway. Um, when kids aren't sleeping well enough at nighttime, oftentimes you'll see behavioral issues during the day. You know, surprise, surprise, if they're not getting a good night's sleep, they are not focusing well the next day and kids oftentimes we'll have ADHD-like symptoms um, during the day and that can be misdiagnosed and it could really just be a poor sleep cycle. In some cases you can even see bed wetting. We, you know, we have seen these sorts of things, but there's a variety of reasons why you, know, you wanna get in there and, and, and do some expansion. Um, and there's really three opportunities to do expansion for kids. And we've got different appliances that will promote growth. And we'll talk about what appliances are the, the best appliances in, in other videos. But the baby teeth phase between the ages of like two and six will be pre predominantly baby teeth. And you can certainly get expanders in there at that age. We normally will not do expanders um, between the ages of two and six because it's difficult to get the kids to comply. The most popular time to do expander treatment is during what we call a mixed dentition, which will typically be between the ages of six and 11. And during that time, there'll be a period of time where there'll be a mixture of adult front teeth and baby back teeth. Um, and we can make appliances and appliances will promote growth in the in the right direction
The last option for expansion for kids is people that just got to it a little bit too late. And it is actually possible with kids, as long as they're still growing, to do expansion once there's predominantly only adult teeth in the mouth. So that would be probably between the ages of like, you know, 11 and maybe 14. And the expanders, I really don't like the word expander because it makes it sound like we're actually pushing the jaw structure. What expanders do is they actually promote growth in the direction that the child needs growth. So there's typically a white stretch applied by the appliance and that will stimulate the jaws to grow in the direction that you've designed the appliances to have the growth go. And as long as the child is still growing, um, then you're gonna get some growth in the direction that the appliances were designed to get the growth. I would say about 80% of facial growth and development happens between the ages of, I would say, five and 11. So after kids get to the point of 11, the expansion treatment uh, opportunities definitely get a bit less. And once kids get to be 15, 16, they're more or less treated as adult cases. We actually do have adult appliances that will stimulate bone to start growing again, um, even after it's stopped. Um, we have growth appliance options for adults who may have developed things like sleep apnea and TMJ pain later in life. And that's really one of the biggest reasons why we try to do expansion and growth appliances for kids is to prevent them from having these sorts of things happen. And of course, it doesn't hurt that we can get the jaws to grow to be large enough to have the teeth fit so that they look nice, smile well, and chew well. Uh, so again, my name is Dr. Adams, and I hope we've answered some of your questions about you know, what the best palate expander is, and the, or expanders in general, and when the best time to get the expanders done. Thank you.